Welcome everybody to this week's version of Tales from the Jar Side. The title this week is Tales from the Jar Side. We might have a theme song. Image generation using Stable Diffusion XL. Spring AI and embeddings. And the usual collection of silly toots and skeets. And maybe tweets, but nah, probably not. The subtitle this week is I Grilled a Chicken for Nearly Two Hours and it still wouldn't tell me why I crossed the road. So, welcome fellow Jarheads to Tales from the Jar Side, the Cousin IT newsletter for the week of September 10th through 17th, 2023. This week I taught week two of my spring and three weeks course on the O'Reilly Learning Platform. Regular readers of and listeners to and of course video viewers of. And I like those people, I need the views. <laughs> This newsletter are affectionately known as Jarheads and are far more intelligent, sophisticated, and especially attractive than the average newsletter reader or listener or viewer. Bring the average up, see? If you wish to become a Jarhead, please subscribe using the included button. That's my cue to take a look at the YouTube channel, see how that's doing. So if I go to youtube.com slash at Tales from the Jar side, here is that page right now. And according to what I see here, I am up to 679 subscribers. So that sounds like a good number. Let's see if that keeps going up. This week, I did one major video. We'll talk about that shortly. That's the one that says Java Hearts SDXL, generating images from Java. But I also published a pair of shorts. One of them I didn't resize properly, apparently. But both of those are attempts to make a theme song for the channel using AI. And let me tell you what that's about, and then that's going to cover the first section of the newsletter anyway. There's a site called Suno, S-U-N-O dot AI, and it is about generating music from text or just at random. Let me go there now. So here is Suno.ai. There's not much to it. Really, it's all about using the Discord. So there's really, there's nothing else on this page. I tried scrolling up and down, see nothing basically happened. But the deal is, is that everything comes from the Discord channel. So let me go over there. And here is the Discord channel. Well, more properly, this is the Discord channel. And there's lots of information in there. And I was looking at some of the help messages and how you go ahead and use this, et cetera. But it turns out that the Suno bot itself, you can access directly, what they call the Suno chirp bot. And therefore, when you're making your music, if you will, then nobody has to see it or hear it <laughs> or be distracted by it. But what the heck, I've been playing around with this. Now, the way it works is, is you put in slash chirp, and that brings up this little dialog box. And it says, this form will be submitted to Suno Chirp. Do not share passwords or other sensitive information. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then you pick a style of music or leave it as random. You can put in your own lyrics or have ChatGPT make the lyrics about a topic you put in there. Now, I tried putting in or letting ChatGPT come up with some lyrics about my channel, and it didn't do great. So I went to GPT-4, because I have a subscription to that, and tried over there, and that seemed to do a bit better. And in here, you'll see I've done several of these. This is the uh, one I just did. Actually, let me show you the ones on the YouTube channel. So here's the pop one. Hey there, Des. It's okay. Java, Kotlin, and Spring, oh my. Groovy, rattle, don't be shy. I don't know why it mispronounces great. Tales from the jar side. Oh yeah. Crack, put on the code, let's take a ride. From design patterns to the latest trends. And that's it. That, that's how it ends. So you get a maximum, I believe, of, I don't think you get a whole minute. I think you get about 30 seconds. 
it might have bumped it up to 45. Now this one, I put in emo. This one actually I think came out a little better. That actually sort of ends. I mean, okay. So in preparation for today's broadcast, I went in and tried to make uh, one using a style of music. Oh, there's the emo one. And here's the one with funk. I tried to do funk. My son suggested that. I don't think these came out as good. Let me just give you an idea here. Hey there, Tales. It's time to tune in to Tales from the Jaws. And then stops <laughs> like okay I mean I've had worse you know I mean th this one's worse but that's okay and then the other one I tried which actually came out one of them came out surprisingly well is I went with k-pop so here's the k-pop version this one I think I'm gonna put in the newsletter next week hey there does it's time to tune in to tales from the jar so let's begin Java got in it spring oh my I mean, okay. I'll have to try a couple more. Uh, I'm on the free plan at the moment, and that gives me a certain limit. I think it's 20, 25, no, how many a month? Something like that. So I'm probably rapidly running out. But I could still do a couple more, and we'll see how it goes. Oh, man, this is so silly. Let me go back to what we were doing. Okay, so back to the newsletter. So as I said, hey, we have a theme song, maybe, and that's where I talked about Chirp. That's the Chirp bot inside of Suno, and I put in a little picture to show running Chirp, and then here's the form you fill out. And then here's the prompt I put into GPT-4 saying I need a theme song for my YouTube channel. Videos are about my weekly newsletter and other topics from Java, Groovy, Kotlin, Spring, Gradle, not Gradle. All right, I don't know where it's getting that. And other software development topics. The song can only be a maximum of 30 seconds. Can you give me some lyrics? And this is what it came back with. And that's what I've been just pasting in each time. So at any rate, I decided to make them both into shorts because why not? You know, get some feedback on that that way. And they came out okay. That's what the Descript tool is for, by the way. Here, here it is. And if I look in the Descript tool here, you can see the project listed here. And there's the music. And this one I did resize properly. And you can see everything in there. And I could go ahead and play it and even publish it from here. Although I find it's a bit more successful if I just download it and then upload it myself. So... Okay, so now you know all about that. <laughs> so do we have a theme song? Mm, I don't know, but okay, let's see what happens. More seriously, but still not terribly serious, if you think about it, I did, I've been continuing my exploration of AI tools called from, from Java. So now, if you were to look at the user manual, so here is the... API reference, let me go to chat for example. This is the API reference for platform.openai.com. I've been showing this the last couple of weeks. I basically use the RESTful web service. I suppose I should look at it in either documentation or API reference. And then they talk about how to use this from Python or how to use it from curl and or I think they even have a, a JavaScript option as well. And the books talk about Python, but I use the rest option 
because as far as Java is concerned, this is just another RESTful web service. So I do the networking with the HTTP client and I take the JSON data uh, in here and in the other, in the outputs and everything, and I map it to Java records. And using Java 17, that works out really nicely. I can also put in my prompts for the chat as multi-line strings, you know, text blocks in Java, even use formatting, the formatted command that was added in Java 15 to plug in values. This makes them into actual prompts, which is something that the Python API really favors. So that's been very useful. Now this week, what I spent time with was the image generation because uh, this actually, sorry about that. Two weeks ago, I spent time on the image generation here, which involves Dolly. So this week, instead of doing that, I went to Stable Diffusion. Now this is platform.stability.ai, and this is the one I've been using this uh, this week. Let me resize that a little bit. And if I go to the text to image one, this gives me a chance to use Stable Diffusion XL version 1.0, which is the good one. You know, I've been I've been playing with that one. And again, there's JSON data I have to map using records, uh, both on the input and on the output. And some of the JSON structures they picked are a little on the strange side. But as long as they got a RESTful web service, I can map to it. Let me resize that again just to get rid of that. But I just wanted to show you the options here. So if I go to my code, then here is the Stability AI class. So I go to the base URL. I pick the Stable Diffusion XL version 1 engine. I have a key I load from the environment. There's my JSON parser for the JSON data. There's my HTTP client to transmit it. And as usual, I have to set the author authentication header. I can get the balance. I can get the various engines. And when I want to generate an image, I have to create this payload. And I've been hard coding it into photographic stuff and number of images I generally set one or two or maybe four sometimes and have to set a text prompt with the text in it plus a weight to say how, how much randomness is allowed to be in there. And then I do a post request and I get data back. And from the data that comes back, I check the finish reason, I map everything to the string. That's the base 64 encoded image itself. Write it to a file using Java's decoder and see how many images I got back. And to give you an idea what I tend to get if I look under source main resources in the stable diffusion section here, here's some images to give you an idea. Isn't that nice? I mean, it, it's so much more detailed and crisper and cleaner than the DALL-E ones. Uh, I like that one. That's pretty good. I tried to say a happy robot this time. And there's another robot leaping into the air and so on. And I did, I think I checked those four into the GitHub repository. So that's available if you want to play. And I also put in my image carousel here and updated that. So now it reads all the images under source main resources images in all the subfolders. And if I want to actually uh, use that, oh, it's not in a configuration here. Let me go to Gradle and go to tasks and just do the run task. And that allows me to do my carousel that I showed previously. So the only problem with it is it'll bring it up on the wrong screen. So I have to drag that over here. And these are the images rotating every three seconds. Uh, some of those are from Mid Journey and some are from Stable Diffusion. And then you'll rapidly be able to tell, yeah, there's ones from Dolly. So any rate, it all works. I don't have a lot of images in the GitHub repository. I was trying not to check everything in there, but I've got some and I figured I might as well give you a, a batch of them. Uh, let me close that. I'm going to talk more about this next week, but I do need to tell you, uh, I also want to let you know that on the 
O'Reilly Learning Platform, I read through a really good new released book, and it was about developing applications with GPT and, uh, well, Chat GPT and GPT-4. It mostly talked about the Python API, but a lot of the concepts are really good, and, and I think they're very helpful. Again, I'll talk more about that next week. It's all part of the process of my learning some of this stuff. Okay, let's, at any rate, that's that video. The robot, of course, on the cover there, on the uh, thumbnail, I suppose you'd say, was one generated with stable diffusion. And then I used Canva's background removal tool to make it so I could put it on there transparently and use the little fonts to play with the stable diffusion one. At any rate, that video is on YouTube as well. Okay, I think I've told you everything about that. There's the JSON data, there's a record. Here's the result that comes back. There was one quirk and the one quirk was is that I, I put a setting into JSON to convert what they call snake case, lowercase with underscores in the JSON data into camel case in Java. And that worked everywhere except right here. You see this finish reason? That's the JSON data. That's supposed to be finish underscore reason, all lowercase. Here they did camel case. So I actually had to go into my record and say, oh, by the way, JSON, that one's actually in camel case. <laughs> so I had to specify the name. Otherwise, it missed that one. Uh, that's this. I had to put in serialized name to make sure that worked. Okay, and there's a picture from Stable Diffusion. And then let's move on. Meanwhile, the project that's coming down the pipe that I'm interested in is Spring AI. And Spring AI is doing a lot of the same stuff I'm doing, except they get to take advantage of all the networking provided by Spring and the built-in Jackson JSON parser. They also are planning to go well beyond what I've done so far, although I don't think they're interested in the image generation, but they are doing connected chats, what they call a chain. They're doing something similar to what they do in the Python world. There's a lot of stuff coming and they have this mechanism known as embeddings. Now, Craig Walls, the author of Spring in Action, made a video this week showing a little bit about the Spring AI API with embeddings and he did a nice job with it. And the funny part, of course, is that this is what the documentation currently looks like for Spring AI outside the AI concept section. See, you've got all these sections here with TBD. You've got basically nothing there. But he works for Spring. He has access to the head of the project and he can ask questions and find out what's actually there. And therefore, he was able to produce an interesting video. Now, of course, that means I can use what he learned. And there are some samples. There's some code that I can browse as well to find out how to use this. So I'm planning to do more with that. I do want to do the embeddings. I do want to redo everything with Spring AI, but I'm going to give it a little time. The version on that again is 0.2, so it's a little early. Uh, I did point out that coming this, this coming Thursday, I'm going to host another Tales from the Jar Side live stream and Craig will be on the live stream. So I could ask him all about it and find out what his experience with this stuff is and what he thinks the future of it is. Maybe I, I'll press him to give me a release date, although I'm sure he'll duck that, but we'll see. Okay, so that takes care of that part. Let's move on to our toots and skeets and whatever they call them on Blue Sky and so, so on. Yes, they call them toots on Mastodon. I think they call them skeets on Blue Sky. So I don't know what they call them on threads. That's probably the one I'm wondering about. Okay, so here was one about chess. I used to, if you followed my newsletter for a while, you know I was playing in a few tournaments there for a while, especially after the pandemic and a couple online. And I kind of stopped. I thought this was really fun. I, I'm much more, I, I enjoy chess as a spectator sport when you watch the grandmasters go at it, or even some of the really, really good bots. That's fun to watch. So when I play chess, how I think I play is this dragon, how I look at my opponents is that dragon, and my moves is this goofy looking one. Yeah, that figures. My friend Jim Harmon is also not playing as much as he was, but we'll see. I thought this was really clever. I called it biblical scholarship, but it just says 2,000 years from now, people will not understand the difference between the phrase butt dial and booty call because <laughs> they both fit, right? And if you don't have the context, 
how do you know? And so this is exactly why the Bible is so hard to understand. I don't know about the biblical part of it, but imagine the memes we're doing now look look back on five years from now. It's just, that's going to be hard enough to understand. I mean, I try to explain some of the memes from my when I was young to my son, and he just rolls his eyes. This was great. Uh, the Riker Googling Mastodon feed, he used to have um, a Twitter feed called that. Looks like he's on a Mastodon server called Bots in Dot Space. Interesting. I don't know about that one. Darmok and Jalad Netflix original series. And that by itself was great. I like the reply too. Shaka when they canceled season two. My take on that is if it was done by Marvel, then the first episode would be pretty good. It would peak around episode four, and then there'd be four episodes of just padding, and then finally into fade into some unresolved, pointless disaster at the end that people would complain about for months, or at least until the next series came along. This was good. Hope your day goes better than this. And how was your day, dear? And apparently that mouse got caught in a trap. Aw. But... Yeah, not not good. That day did not go well. This one on Magma, the says the devil saying, you will spend eternity chained up over this white hot lava, man. Well, actually, because we're underground, it's called magma. Devil, you do understand that's why you're here, don't you? I want to show that to my boy because, uh, yeah, he tends to split hairs like that a lot. Nevertheless, very funny. This one about the writer's strike. Apparently we have a theme going because it said of all those amazing writers still out on strike, Star Trek geeks are definitely my favorite. This writer's guild on strike sign says Temba, his checks blank. Yes, very good. And Shaka when the walls fell. I like this. Of course, I've written three O'Reilly books. This is one of those uh, user-generated O'Reilly books. See, at the top it says, now with user-generated content, there's a blank title, of course, and it says, essential, quote, close parentheses, semicolon, drop, table, animals, semicolon, dash, dash. Uh, so, a classic example of an injection attack. In fact, that one's a SQL injection attack. For those who are not aware, what that means is, is if someone was going to do an insert into animals and they were just accepting user input, then they probably started with an open quote. This closes that quote, closes the parentheses, semicolon, and then writes the drop table command, and then the dash dash at the end comments out the rest. So if there is in fact a table called animals, if you have rights to drop it, if the person writing the code is just accepting user input without sanitizing it, then that would be bad. But then that, you know, they probably deserve it. That reminded me of the classic XKCD cartoon, which I linked to online. It's number 327, better known as Exploits of a Mom. It says, hi, this is your son's school. We're having some computer trouble. Oh dear, did he break something? In a way, did you really name your son Robert, quote, Parentheses, semicolon, drop, table, student, semicolon, dash, dash. Oh, yes, little Bobby Tables, we call him. Well, we've lost this year's student records. I hope you're happy. And she says, and I hope you've learned to sanitize your database inputs. Now, I'm a Java person. That means we're supposed to use a prepared statement, not a regular statement with string concatenation in it. The beauty of a prepared statement is if somebody put in Robert, quote, etc., for first name, then that's the first name they would have. It would be Robert, quote, parentheses, semicolon, drop, table, student, semicolon, dash, dash. In other words, it'd be a literal string. It wouldn't be executable SQL code. And that's the problem. There are many types of injection attacks. I'm looking forward to showing this to my students in the Trinity class. Little Bobby Tables, however, is famous among security researchers. The next one was about scrolling. It says, I am now at an age when I consider scrolling to my birth year in a drop-down menu as a mini workout. And yeah, that I, I got to go way back. So I get that. Nothing mini about it. This was funny. Tis the season. It's showing a bunch of pumpkins that aren't orange. And it says, wild pumpkins drained of their spice by illegal poachers. Please demand ethically sourced pumpkins. Pumpkin spice lattes. Yeah, okay. I've never had a 
pumpkin spice latte, and I don't think I ever will, but that was clever. I am kind of surprised there wasn't a response with something about the spice must flow, just to make a Dune reference in there. But so be it. Maybe it just showed up after I grabbed the picture. This was just brilliant. I, I don't know who thought of this and who made it, but this image showed up as on a Mastodon post, and it just showed that it looks like a bunch of lumber, but it's actually a dresser with drawers that just perfectly blend in like that. That's great. I mean, I, I would love to, to have that. <laughs> Very clever. Now this, if you're a user of JetBrains products, you can clean up leftover tool directories, and I never thought of that. See, here's my tool, JetBrains toolbox, and if I go to the settings here, the menu, and then settings, and then I think it's under tools here, is clean up leftover tool directories. If I click on that, then there's older editions, like this 2022 one. I don't think I need that. I can delete that, and I could delete this, well, 2023.1. Maybe I want to keep that around. So, yeah, I think there was one left I didn't want to get rid of, although maybe I should get rid of them all. I don't even know, but still, it's word of advice if, in case you want to clean up some old directories there. Just that cleaned up about 20 gigs of space for me. <laughs> and then finally, this little set of lyrics. If you're happy and you know it, overthink. If you're happy and you know it, overthink. If you're happy and you know it, give your brain a chance to blow it. If you're happy and you know it, overthink. That hit a little too close to home. Very good. Well, have a great week, everybody. The video version is here. And last week I did week two of spring in three weeks. So this week I have the same week three. I forgot to mention I'm also doing a, a version of my Managing Your Manager course on the O'Reilly platform as well in the APAC time zones. That'll be Thursday evening. So hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know if you have any opinions about Chirp or anything else. And I'll see you all again next week. Take care.